what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out 10 embarrassing times wrestlers try to look cool ah this should be a very interesting one seeing these wrestlers trying to be cool and hip as they used to say back in the day man should be a very interesting one man it's it's always a uh a cringe moment when you see someone trying to be cool or tap into the youth and it doesn't work it doesn't come off organically cool so we're gonna check this out should be a funny one appreciate all love and support let's get right into this man <laughs> Since this bald idiot really isn't best positioned to determine that which is and is not cool but there are certain pro wrestlers who simply are and are not so here are just a few examples of those who tried their bloody best to come across as cool at one point or another but unfortunately ended up looking like a bit of a tit in the end i am gareth here from what culture wrestling be a good one, man. 10 embarrassing times wrestlers try to look Trying cool to number 10 <laughs> stephanie mcmahon wears a Kangol hat. Oh, yes, maybe Stephanie this. McMahon knew what she was doing in 2001. Maybe a shred of self-awareness <laughs> drove her to wear a leather Kangol hat emblazoned with the ECW logo. But if WWE truly was self-aware, they'd have actually cared about what its audience thought about the invasion angle in the first place. Mm -hmm. They might have realized that there was more money in positioning ECW and WCW as, you know, threats. Mm -hmm. If Steph herself had an ounce of this human quality, she probably wouldn't have compared the 9 11 terror attacks to her father's indictment. The leather Kangol hat, therefore, was not heat. It was something Stephanie McMahon wore to look cool, perhaps after first learning of the existence of MTV2. Her aesthetic <laughs> was so painfully try hard for what was cool <laughs> not a at try the time, hard. that it's a miracle she didn't tell you efforts to get up and get down with the sickness. Number nine, and so does Triple H. More evidence in the Stephanie McMahon wasn't being self aware file is that was she actually wearing a Kangol to make herself look cringe? on purpose, she'd have had to acknowledge that her husband looked yeah. cringe by accident two years <laughs> earlier. Darling, you looked a right idiot with that hat on when you were trying to get over as a main eventer. Can I use that to look like an idiot? <laughs> Triple H eventually got it, or was given it, four or so years after making his WWF debut. At the turn of the millennium, Triple H was finally undeniable as an elite tier wrestler. The embryonic game character was mm -hmm. fatally tryhard though, and with his Kangol hat and hippie adjacent <laughs> shades, he didn't know which gender generation of cool person so he like definitely did have that's why it made me think triple h probably gave it that <laughs> The franchise uh, instead tried yeah. very hard to look like them all. And with that in mind, what's your favorite phase of the game's WWE career? Are you actually a Kangol lover? Well, let me know in the comment section down below. Number eight, Just Incredibles Weird Snarl Thing. There's an asterisk next to this entry because it's not entirely clear whether Just Incredible recognized his inherent cringe and used it for heat. Was he trying to look cool? Or did he know that lounging snarl thing he did was actually detestable? As a member of the Rise X Factor stable, Credible made his entrance to the ring with his mouth dropped open, positively radiating douchebag energy. It was as if he was too cool to even close his damn mouth. He leaned to the side as if recalling that a teacher once told him to stand up straight, emoting, no you effing square, I will not because you're the establishment, bitch. To answer those questions, context must be considered. 2001 was a different time to 2023. Mm -hmm. New metal was a fashionable music genre, coming across as the most insufferable a hole imaginable wasn't just a popular thing to do, everybody did it. The baby faces <laughs> and the heels alike. 2001 was the peak or the nadir of the cool heel era. On that mm -hmm. basis, Credible thought he was the dog's bollocks as opposed to dog crap. Number seven, Roman Reigns for virtually all of 2015. Ooh. Roman Reigns is he's he's cool now. He's cool now. But back then, ah. Uh... See, he got it. He, he, uh, he, you know what I'm saying? He got the drip now. He be wearing comfortable stuff, his custom stuff, be having the kicks. Like, he's cool now. But then, oh, God. They tried to make him cool. He was not cool. <laughs> it's cool now. The head of the table is a tremendous act. And even if you can't get jazzed by WWE's creaking standstill promo heavy format, that has to be acknowledged. He has developed a menacing superstar aura. And he is as unsettling as he is badass with his facial expressions. Mm -hmm. Roman Reigns was not cool in 2015, though. No. Not at all. Far Roman from Reigns it. was not cool because he was instructed to emulate a gurning children's clothing line baron in John Cena. 
Yeah. This manifested variously as Roman <laughs> reciting fairy tales and winking to the camera after nailing what was literally the most embarrassing tires. line of dialogue in professional <laughs> wrestling history, which is rather like a vet saying, we're there, after putting down a cat. He actually did something <laughs> like we're there when trying to pin. He did the radical hang 10 sign and yeah. head banged a bit. Because Michael Hayes probably produced the match thinking Roman would get over as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Tribal Chief. Number six, Seth no. Rollins tries to own the room. Years and years after The Rock first got over as a trash-talking phenomenon, mm -hmm. so funny that he effectively doubled as a stand-up comedian, mm -hmm. his timing was incredible. The best material was delightfully cruel, and his supernatural presence was so powerful that he could get just about any <laughs> stuff over. Now, because Rock was so great, WWE has for years imposed this promo style on virtually every top babyface. They it tried to. Rancid. In 2019, Rollins was the latest uncool man WWE tried to make cool. And building his match with Brock Lesnar at mm. SummerSlam, he referred to his opponent as a real Godzilla-looking bastard, if you ask me, complete with an impression of a caveman. This, this right here, was harrowing. Far, far superior in the heel role, Rollins was so dire in his attempts to own the room as an easygoing babyface that he had to turn heel later that very year. Yeah. Number five, Vince <laughs> Didn't Russo <work>. in general. <laughs> Vince Russo is a man who walked around the WCW locker room oh, with a baseball man. mat, thinking he was the hardest guy in the building. Who got up in the face of Goldberg and generally adopted the snarling disposition of a street tough at all times. He was even funnier in TNA. If you watch his various returns and early big angles, you will marvel at the deafening volume at which he instructed poor Mike Tanay to say the S word. Holy sh, it's Vince Russo, Tanay once screamed in a tone that would adequately have captured the seismic shock of seeing Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the flesh. Russo himself was fond of saying the word himself, of course, because he was primarily interested in coming across cross as the most dangerous and controversial edgelord of all time. <laughs> Number four, Jeff Jarrett joins the Bullet Club. The Bullet Club were a legitimately cool and youthful mm. unit, a major factor behind New Japan's awesome resurgence in the 2010s. The premise behind the stable was a masterstroke. Years and years after the foreign wrestler was no longer received by Japanese fans as a heel by default, Gado sensed that a return to this archetype would sting all the more following their acceptance. That it did. The stable was so over as a gang of cheating mm -hmm. a-holes that the office was bombarded with complaints. Prince Devitt was cool as the front man's state-of-the-art mm -hmm. worker. His successor as the top star, AJ Styles, hadn't yet grown out of his soccer mom hair. In the background, <laughs> Tamatonga was a smirking disturber. Bad Luck Farley looked like a level boss. And Gallows <laughs> and Anderson were super animated heat machine bruisers. It was never too cool. The wonderful obnoxiousness of the Young Bucks assured that. Jeff Jarrett, who briefly joined the stable as part of Global Force Wrestling's inexplicable working agreement with New Japan Pro Wrestling was not cool. He <laughs> was your dad, and he did not grasp that if you're not going to age gracefully in pro wrestling, the least you can do is execute a little Canadian destroyer. But no, he just smashed guitars over yeah. people's heads and thought he was 28. Number three, one, two, three. He's kid still doing that now. Than X -Pac. Your periodic reminder that the one, two, three kid was amazing, and it's a shame that the performer is more synonymous with the X Pack gimmick because X Pack is synonymous with a once great worker feeling two years out of date. As Damn. Back, Sean Waltman was still a dynamo between the ropes, and his brand of edgy humor was a perfect fit for the day. But mm -hmm. that day has aged horrendously. To wit, X-Pac playing the hard man trash talker in 1998 wasn't particularly convincing in the role, but it was cool that he smoked such copious amounts of weed. That was the <laughs> standard back then. Armed with this knowledge, X-Pac was fond of saying, your ass is grass and I'm gonna smoke it. Like a dorm room poster <laughs> transmogrified into a professional wrestler. Ass and grass rhymed, you see? Which was sufficiently cool enough to forget about the suboptimal mental image. Number two, the click go full geezer at Raw 25. Oh, For years, the yeah. various DX and or NWO reunions had developed <laughs> something of an F off quality. Yes, good, gang up on the emerging mid-card heel of the day and give him an ass kicking masquerading as the rub. Didn't you all sell a lot of t-shirts in the boom period? Capital, well done. The TV ratings tended to climb for a one-week injection, mm -hmm. which was rather undermined when the same people did not tune in to watch the regular schmucks the next week. Yeah. Probably <laughs> because the audience had just watched them get beat up. Yep. This development <laughs> reached an idea at Raw 25, the event at which WWE killed nostalgia as much as credibility. This was somehow worse than Triple H and the gang beating on the square, because by aligning with WWE's version of the Bullet Club, mm -hmm. it was as if the lads of the 90s felt they were still as cool and relevant. They were not. They were old established men desperately trying to take credit for a movement 
since they had zero idea how to rip off, much less create. Number one, Seamus regrettably does look stupid. God bless Seamus, man. 14 years into his run with the biggest promotion on the planet, he's still producing the highly physical goods and occasionally blowing the roof off of buildings around the globe. Mm -hmm. WWE does not deserve him, to be honest. And maybe we don't either, because we all told him he looked stupid in 2015. And to be fair, he did, didn't he? Yeah. People always look weird when they get a new radical haircut, and Seamus yeah. got about seven new haircuts at once yeah. with his mohawk and braided beard. The sad thing is that you knew what he was going for. With the new look, he wished to disassociate himself from his good, not great, yeah. title run years. But he developed a new, even worse stigma immediately. <laughs> he that fedora stupid. and suspenders <laughs> look, though, ah. Oh, Banger. And that's our anything but cool <laughs> list. No, any other embarrassing times wrestlers try to. Oh, look man, this is funny. This was a, a good list, man. Go ahead and give this a like because, yeah. <laughs> Anytime there's some type of raw fucking reunion or uh, uh, we're celebrating some raw milestone, <laughs> the DX, they're going to come back out, man. And here's the thing. I love those segments because it's just, it, it pulls on the nostalgia heartstrings. But at the end of the day, they don't help the new talent because whoever comes out there to interrupt them mid promo, they're getting super kicked and pedigreed. <laughs> so it's like, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> but comment down below. Let me know some other moments where you you seen what they were trying to do, trying to make a wrestler cool, and it just didn't work. If it wasn't on this list, let me know. If it was on this list, let me know. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel. Road to 150K. And I'm still getting the speed of YouTube. Rest in the world. Appreciate y'all keeping you me. See y'all next one. Peace.